I was just done. Like, actually, I was like, money was supposed to solve this problem. And mm. it didn't. It didn't fix the trauma. It didn't fix the abuse. It didn't fix the things I'd been through. I'm laying in bed the next morning. Again, keep in mind, I'm 350 pounds. I'm eating chocolate cake, smoking a joint, and watching the CrossFit games. Like, if that's not rock bottom, like, I don't know what is. And I went and I looked in the mirror and I asked myself this really important question. I said, what are you willing to do to have the life that you want to have? And the answer was no excuses, just results. Welcome, Badass Manifester. I am so glad you are here. I'm your host and head coach, Ashley Gordon, master mindset and manifestation biz expert, founder of the Quantum Coaching Certification, and multiple six-figure entrepreneur obsessed with empowering you to create quantum leaps in your energy, your life, and your business. This is the show to help you make magic your everyday normal, where the ripple effect is real and the guest experts are world class. My mission is to power your conscious and subconscious mind with manifestation teachings, business tools, and coaching techniques to put your potential into action. Consider this your weekly up level. Are you ready for quantum transformation? Let's do this. Welcome back, badass manifestors. I'm so excited because I have such a special guest on today. And, you know, we're bringing in that masculine energy because we haven't had a male on the podcast in so long. And I'm so freaking excited because Michael is amazing. He is the founder of Think Unbroken. He is a best-selling author, award-winning speaker, podcast host, and advocate for adult survivors of childhood trauma. Since 2016, Michael has empowered over 100,000 trauma survivors to get out of the vortex, learn to love themselves, and become the hero of their own story. He has spoken in over 80 countries, y'all, won investments from undercover billionaire Grant Cardone, love Grant, and is on a mission to end generational trauma in this lifetime. Oh my gosh, we are in for a treat. Welcome to the show. Thank you, my friends. Super excited to be here with you. I'm so excited too. Thank you so much for being here. Love your mission. Love what you do. You are so incredibly accomplished. Would love to hear how you have gotten where you are and all these amazing opportunities along the way. Yeah. um, I think for context, I'd love to give a little backstory here so people understand, because I think people hear my story and they go, well, that's impossible. I'm not even going to listen. Um, When I was four years old, my mother, who was a drug addict and alcoholic, she actually cut off my right index finger. And my stepfather was super abusive. The kind of guy you pray is never your stepfather. Spent the majority of my childhood homeless and in poverty. In fact, I lived with over 30 different families by the time that I was 12 years old. At 12 years old, I got high for the first time, drunk at 13, expelled from school at 15. I was selling drugs, stealing cars, breaking into houses, hurting people. Luckily got put into a last chance program, still did not graduate high school on time. And I found myself after not being able to make it into the military because I hurt my knee being like, okay, what the hell am I supposed to do? And I made a decision by the time I'm 21, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year legally. This was super important. My uncle's in prison for life. My family's been to jail. I've been in handcuffs and to date, my three childhood best friends have been murdered. And so I knew if I stayed on the trajectory I was heading, that was not going to end well. And sure enough, I did it. I did that thing. Ended up with a Fortune 10 company at 21 years old, no high school diploma, no college education, making six figures and destroyed my life. I was 350 pounds, smoking two packs of cigarettes a day, drinking myself to sleep. And that's when I put a gun in my mouth. I was just done. Like, actually, I was like, money was supposed to solve this problem. And Mm. it didn't. It didn't fix the trauma. It didn't fix the abuse. It didn't fix the things I'd been through. And so I was laying in bed one morning. And you'd think the gun thing would be the rock bottom, but it wasn't. I'm laying in bed the next morning. Again, keep in mind, I'm 350 pounds. I'm eating chocolate cake, smoking a joint, and watching the CrossFit games. Like, if that's not rock bottom, like, I don't know what is. 
And I went and I looked in the mirror and I asked myself this really important question. I said, what are you willing to do to have the life that you want to have? And the answer was no excuses, just results. And today, 11 years later, I've been able to do all those things you just rattled off, but it was this incredible amount of tedious work involved between those two moments. I had to get serious about therapy, group therapy, gestalt therapy, EMDR, NLP, CBT, all the acronyms, AA, NA, SA, all the support groups. I went and got coaching. I went and to conferences and I took them seriously and I read the books and listened to the podcast and watched the videos. And then I got certified in trauma-informed education. I have over 35 certifications today. The only thing I was trying to do was just fix my shit. And the reality is like, that's what led me to this moment. You asked me five years ago, would I be sitting here talking to you today? My answer would be like, no. And so I just simply am going in the direction that the universe wants me to head. And I stopped arguing with myself. Wow. Wow. Um, just listening to your journey and what you've gone through to get to where you are is so incredibly empowering. And also like, my heart is with you. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm sure everyone listening is feeling that way too. Like, damn, I should, I got to get my shit together, <laughs> right? Like if you can make it to the other side of everything that you've been through, I think it's super inspirational for people to be able to do the same for them. I'm curious when you were looking in the mirror and you got that answer, no excuses, just results. Is that, is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. What was that like? Like, how did you, what was your next step? Like when you were in that space of like, okay, just results, no excuses, just results. Like what was your first step that you did? Yeah, I stopped negotiating with myself. Ooh. That was step one. You know, I, I remember in that moment looking in that mirror of being eight years old, the water company came and they turned our water off. I grew up in Indianapolis. I grew up in a city. We were so poor, they turned our water off. And I said, well, when I'm a grown up, this won't be my life. And it wasn't from a financial standpoint, but in every other way, I was still that hurt little boy. And I was used to letting myself down again and again and again, because the only thing I ever experienced was what? Being let down. And so learned behavior had informed how I treated myself in the world. And I was like, what the fuck is your problem? And I thought this thing that really sat with me and I teach my clients this and it's uncomfortable. You're not a child anymore. And I kept telling myself this, that doesn't mean that you're like culpable for all the bad things that happen. I want to be very clear about that because what's not our responsibility, but from this moment forward, I was like, it's my responsibility to do what I have to do to make my life what I believe I'm capable of making it. And so this idea of not negotiating with myself came from this. I used to be the guy that would drive to the gym every day. And there was a McDonald's and a bar in the gym parking lot. And I would go to and smoke a cigarette and go to McDonald's and go to the bar and then get in my car and say tomorrow. And then I stopped doing that because there's no tomorrow. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. It's a fallacy. It doesn't actually exist. And I think that one of the biggest things that happened for me that I want people to understand if you reestablish your relationship with time and death, you will change the way you move in the world. Because I'm going to tell you right now, the biggest fear that I have is being on my deathbed, knowing that I negotiated with myself enough that it led to regret. And so that was it, that moment, that thing. And look, I want to be clear too. It wasn't like I fucking like flipped the switch and my life was different overnight. That's nonsense. It doesn't work that way. It was a battle. It took a lot of time, effort, energy, and money to get to that place where I was finally like, okay, I'm feeling pretty good. And so you got to deploy a tremendous amount of patience in this also, but ultimately you got to be okay with that reflection in the mirror. Mm. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Because I, I do think it's easy for people to think like, oh, flip the switch, his life changed. And I think it's obvious that that's not, that's not the case. And I love what you said about not negotiating with yourself. 
And when you were able to make those shifts and say, okay, I'm driving to the gym and actually go in and do what you said you were going to do. How did that rebuild trust with yourself? Yeah, that's such a great question. I'd never had it. So I remember being, you know, 26 years old, 27 years old and going, I don't have self-esteem. I don't have courage. I don't believe in myself. I don't have confidence because it was never allotted in my life. As a child growing up, every time I used my intuition to move towards who it was I thought I was, there was some type of ramification, some type of pain, some type of punishment. It started in my home and it definitely seeped over into school because, you know, think about this. You color the moon purple and the teacher goes, that's not how you do it. Right. And then suddenly you learn how to turn yourself off as a defensive mechanism. You're like, OK, I have to be safe right now. So I'm not I'm not going to be me. My favorite band is going to be Ashley's favorite band. My favorite food is going to be Ashley's favorite food. And you learn how to not be yourself. It is a survival tactic. And so what happened is as I was going through this process of doing these microscopic granular incremental shifts in my life, just to move one degree in a different direction than the direction I had been in, I started to notice the way that I felt about myself. I started to think about the idea like, okay, maybe if I just try this thing, it'll bring me closer to who I am. And so was it a part trust? Yes, absolutely. But the bigger part of it was like, I was learning to be comfortable with myself, with my decisions, with my choices, with my actions. And in that I started to build myself up. And I think that's the thing that starts to happen when you shift and you pivot into what's next in your life, you start to challenge the narrative of what you thought was capable to ultimately see your reality be different. Mm, wow. Yes, yes, yes. And I think something so important along the journey that you realized and something you said in the beginning, going back to is that you thought that money was going to solve all those problems, but everything that you just like told me about, like making those little shifts, obviously took money, took investing in yourself, but in a completely different capacity than you probably thought money would save it, would, would fix it all. Can you speak to that a little bit more? Yeah, I, I think that, so I came up with this acronym team, time, effort, energy, or money. If you want to change your life, you're going to have to invest at least one of those things. Chances are you're going to have to invest all four, right? And, and if the currency of life were gummy bears, I'd invest that, but it's not. So <laughs> we have to take that into consideration. And, and the thing that I had to rebuild my relationship and foundational understanding of what money was, because as a child growing up, money was the crux for all the bad in the world, right? We don't have enough money for shoes. We don't have enough money for food. We don't have enough money for electricity. We don't have enough money for heat. This lack mentality was destroying me. And so like when I got money, like what you hear happens all the time, I had no idea what to do with it. And so I literally wasted more money than I'm going to tell you because it's not necessary, but it's all, it was all gone. I wasted it all. Because I was, think about this, I was making multiple six figures living paycheck to paycheck. Mm. How does that make sense? Well, I didn't understand it. Money is this tool. Money is an asset for creating and building the life that you want to have. Now, at the time, if like my life, it was partying in Vegas and having a $100,000 car and having $500 dinners four nights in the week, then great. But then you understand that that's not serving you. That's not building your life into something different. And I remember the first time that I got a coach and I was terrified of the idea that I was going to have to spend money as an investment to make my life better. And this year, like, and this isn't a flaunt, like I'm not flexing, I swear to God, I'm going to spend like $50,000 on my own personal development this year. I used to be scared to spend $5 on a book. You have to understand this. Like this is for real because I grew up in such poverty that the idea of spending money was this catalyst for just chaos because I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know where to put it when I had it. My grandma used to say that money's burning a hole in your pocket. I'd be like, yeah, no shit because I don't know what to do with it. So I need it away from me because it's fucking up my life. And then I understood the way to use it as a catalyst for massive change, right? massive change. I've been able to, because of time, effort, energy, or money, surround myself with amazing human beings who over the scale of time have been one step ahead of me. 
where I'm just like, oh, cool. That's the direction I want to go. But the development for me, it literally started like, I'm going to go buy a book. Like I was literally scared to go buy a book at one point in my life. So it's a relationship change. It's the, what it's perception is reality, right? Yes, yes, yes. I, and when you were talking, I was like, wow, his relationship with money completely shifted. And I love the acronym team, like go team, right? Because you were able to assess what you what what you value and where you want to place the value in your life. And oh my gosh, what a transformation from $5 to investing $50,000. I'm right there with you. I think it's one of the most important things that we could possibly do. I'm curious, like fast forward a bit, you know, when you came up with Think Unbroken, I think it's such a powerful name, such a powerful brand and, and kind of empire that you're building. Where did that come from? Like, can you share a little bit about that inspiration? Because I think a lot of my listeners, uh, they definitely get inspiration. They've definitely been through a lot of things, traumatic things in their life as we all have, and they want to do something to help people, but you're actually doing it. So can you share a little bit about how you came up with it and what that was, what that journey has been like? Yeah. So I, w- I was writing a blog a few years ago under a completely different name. And I was just putting out by nature, I'm a writer first. I always have been. And so I was just writing these blogs, putting them out and people would be like, Hey, that thing that you wrote, I get that. Like my dad did this. My mom did that. Like I connect to this and it turned into, wow, that's really inspiring me. And then it turned into like that thing you wrote saved my life. Like it was really crazy to like watch this transition. And it was still under this other, this other title. And so I'm, I'm laying in bed one night after a conversation I had with someone and the, they send me a text message and they're like, you know what? you're still broken. And I was like, Hmm, okay, cool. Only been hearing that all my life. Right. It's weird when we don't necessarily agree with someone, we want to hurt them when we haven't done the work. And the person I was in connection with at that moment, they had not. Right. And I get it. It's it's fine. Like that's life. It's how it goes. But I remember being like little kid and they'd be like, you're broken. You're messed up. Get away from me. I don't want to play with you. And then being a teenager, you're broken. Look at you. Can't even graduate from the worst high school in Indiana. What is wrong with you? And then it turned into you're broken. Look at you. You're 350 pounds. You don't know how to take care of yourself. And I'm laying in bed and I'm just like, it's like three o'clock in the morning, fucking shower moment. Right. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's not me. That's, That's not what I believe. That's not how. I think. And I was like, ah, that's what it is. Think unbroken. It was literally like a lightning bolt. Right. (gasps) And so the, the mission with that, it just, I never look, I, I never signed up for this. I never signed up to be the spokesperson for adults dealing with the fact that they had terrible parents who fucked them up. That's not my MO. That's not the headline I ever thought was going to be under my headstone. Right. And the truth is like, the reality is I go, what's my mission? to end generational trauma in my lifetime through education. Well, the truth is, I don't want another child to ever have to tell you the story that I told you when we started talking. And that's what drives me, right? It's not money. It's not glory. It's not fame. It's none of those things. It's about this idea that maybe my brothers might listen to this. And people get caught up. They're like, I want to change the world. I want to be a coach. I want to do all this shit. Like, who are you serving? Whose life are you bringing value to? What impact are you making in the world to make it better? Because I'll tell you this, I've lost more money building this business than I lost spending it in casinos in Las Vegas. All right. And so, and it's a lot, trust me. And so the thing that you have to understand is you got to be willing to under, to like dedicate to this and a measure the life that I'm building is 30 years away. Like it's so far away. Like I can't even touch it yet, but I go, you know what? I'm dedicated to it. I'm committed to it. I'm going to see it through because the value of impact is far outweigh any of the things that have ever happened to me in my life. Wow. I really felt that like deeply, deeply in my soul. And the mission, I always say this, I literally posted this the other day. When you lead from your mission, when you lead from that place within you that pulls you forward because you have to, it's, it's, it's a have to, it's a, it's a, 
it's a force within you that drives what you're doing, it's inevitably going to be a success. It's inevitably going to impact people. It's inevitably going to help you reach those people. And I think it's a really great point you made around like, yeah, there's so many people that want to be coaches and they want to change the world, but like who, who do you want to help? Who do you want to serve? Who do you wake up every day and show up for? And what's Mm -hmm. that mission? And getting really, really dialed into that mission is so powerful. Question. When you think about unbroken, being unbroken, do you, did you identify yourself as being broken? Like, do you feel like people are actually, in fact, broken at certain points in their life? Or do you believe that they've always been whole? They just didn't know it. Like, what is your belief system around that? I'm curious. Yeah, I don't, I don't think anybody's broken. I think people just need a fucking hug. Like, yes. for, like for real, you know what I mean? Like this, this idea that we're broken is just so nonsensical to me. I, I just, I'm not a proponent for it. And that's why it's think unbroken, right? Because I automatically dismiss the idea that it's a possibility, right? Yes. I don't even allow it. I don't allow it to be a part of my nomenclature who I am. And, and in that, you know, I think people always go, well, what does it actually mean? What does think unbroken mean? What does it mean to be unbroken? It's very simple in a practical sense. It's Can you be okay with the reflection in the mirror, knowing that you're living life in accordance of the goals that you have while filtering your actions through your values, your wants, needs, and interests and boundaries? Like that's it, right? So I know that's a lot of words together, but really what it means is like, are you showing up for yourself? Are you living on your terms? Are you not letting other people's opinions be the thing that dictates the actions that you take in your life? Are you following through on your promises and the things that you've said that you're going to do? Are you ultimately putting your feet on the ground every single day and moving towards a life that only you can create because it is your life? Mm. That's being unbroken. Right. And it's the most difficult thing that we do, because in that you have to learn how to love yourself. And I tell people all the time this idea that life is built within the context of thought. Mindset is everything. If you can see in front of me, it literally says mindset is everything. And people go, what is mindset? Mindset is a word that is just thrown around so much. It makes me want to vomit. So let's define what that means. Mindset is the way that you talk to yourself, the way that you think about possibility in your life. I am a proponent of this idea. What you think becomes what you speak. What you speak become your actions and your actions become your reality. And so knowing we come from these volatile or traumatic backgrounds where people say you're broken, you're not good enough, you're not strong enough, you're not capable enough, you're never going to be anything. And then you're 18, 32, 56, 81, and you're telling yourself this story. Right now, you're telling yourself something that if you told me, or you told someone else would get you punched in the face or arrested. You have to think about the way you're talking to yourself. And so in a very practical sense, I'm going to teach you something that I teach every one of my clients day one, moment one, you're going to take out a piece of paper and a pen, and you're going to write this down and you're going to repeat this to you, to yourself until you convince yourself that it's true. You're going to change the way you think about possibility in your life. And it starts with this. I am the kind of person that is kind to myself. Mm. Why? Because if you are the kind of person that is kind to yourself and you think that, then you will act that way and you will move towards those things that then thus become your reality on a long enough timeline. So if you want to go from this place of maybe I am broken, maybe I am fucked up, maybe these things happen to me, and you want to move towards this idea, this notion, this concept of being unbroken, it starts with the way that you speak to yourself. Wow. I am the kind of person that is kind to myself. Yes, 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 yes. And what a difference that makes. I think it's so beautiful to find that really powerful entry point that doesn't feel impossible to say, you know, like being able, like it would be very different if you were like, I'm the kind of person that is so loved and so good enough and so worthy. Right. But it, I just don't connect to that. I don't connect to that either, (laughs) but I could, I could get on board with being kind to myself. And I think it's really important when you start doing this work that you find an entry point that you can get behind. 
Because if you can get behind something a little bit at a time and you can believe it a little bit at a time, that's what creates the quantum leaps, right? Yeah. It's life is momentum. I love that you just said that life is about momentum. It's about these incremental microscopic granular shifts that you take every single day through micro wins, which sometimes are as simple as I brush my teeth today, yes. right? which are sometimes as difficult as I published my book today. Right. Mm. And so the thing about it is as you move towards the trajectory of like leveling up, right, going to what's next in your life, which should optimal, you have to be able to create and build momentum. You just have to keep going forward. And in that, you're going to fall backwards. You're going to make mistakes. I do every day. I screw up every day. I'm going to screw up right now. I'm going to be like, I should have said that thing during Ashley's podcast. And I said the other thing. And then I'm going to go, you know what? Data point. Next time I will. I have a measurement for the way that I operate in the world that doesn't involve me beating myself up all the time, right? And so when you start to do that, you just celebrate these little things that you do and you acknowledge the fact that you didn't smoke the cigarette today. You did leave the relationship. You did start the business. You did do whatever that thing is that keeps you awake at night. Your life will become different. And you, I think you have to be realistic about time frames too, right? Think about this. I'm sitting here talking to you about something that I started the path 11 years ago on. Whoa. And you're trying to blow up on TikTok. Yep. Wow. That's mind blowing. And this word momentum, I've been saying it for like the last two days. I feel like we're very aligned. We have a lot of things <laughs> that are similar. Like this, this momentum is so powerful, this word, because I had a client. She also just had COVID. She's like, I lost all my momentum on social media. I haven't been putting myself out there. I haven't been doing it. I'm like, well, here's the really good news about momentum. You can always get it back. Always. Right? Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. And, and look, it, social media is stupid. Like, let's keep it real. Like at yeah. the end of the day, okay. like it doesn't matter. And, and I think people do get caught up in that pretty easily. Like, and I've been in digital marketing for a very long time, so I understand it. But I think the more important thing in this is like looking at what you just said, you can, re if you did it once, you can do it again. Yep. And if you never did it before, look at someone who has, measure that, study under them, buy their course, read their book, pay the $25,000 for a one-day coaching session whenever you get there. That's one of my goals, right? And so on a long enough timeline, like you get there, be where you are and acknowledge that because today it's online courses and learning how to build your life from following the people who have put it all out here for us to absorb. It's here. It's like here this is what's so crazy to me. Like. I literally still have a library card. All of my books come from the library. Like it's free. Stop using excuses. Like go and build it and just keep moving forward every single day. Right? There's always a reason to find an excuse in life. It's oh, easy. Yeah. It's easy. Like it's wait. Look, let me tell you this. You know what I'd rather be doing right now? Tell I'd me. rather be sitting on my couch, eating gummy bears, smoking a joint, and playing video games. Yes. But how does that serve my purpose, my mission, and what I'm trying to do in my life? Mm. So clarity, this is where people lose momentum because they don't have clarity. They don't have clarity about the intention of what it is that they want to do in their life to the extent in which it drives them to only continue to move forward. People are caught up about this idea of like, man, I didn't do that thing today. It's probably because you don't actually care about it. So true. Oh my God. This is so inspirational right now. This is so good. And don't let it just be that inspiration for you. Let it move you to action, right? Like let Michael's words sink in to yourselves to actually move you to what you really want to be doing and what you're supposed to be doing here. Oh, so good. Um, I had a question. It just left me, but it's okay. It'll come back. Um, wow. 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 So in those, do you let yourself ever just, just lay on the couch and eat gummy bears and smoke a joint or do you not do that anymore? <laughs> I don't do that anymore. 
Yeah, we're beyond that. But I want to, but but what I do let myself do is when I need to recharge, I go and take care of myself. I, I'll go watch a movie or I'll take four days off and I'll go walk around a city or I'll be like, I'm clearing my whole schedule. Sorry, we'll have to do this later. You yeah. know what I mean? And and I think that there's a fine line. People have to be able to, to create and put in the sand for themselves and mm -hmm. ask themselves this question. Am I taking care of myself? Or am I taking it easy on myself? Because these are two very different things. Really good question. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. It was, it was in relation to time and giving yourself realistic time. Something that always makes me feel really good about that is reminding myself that the vision that I have, it's really about the journey. And the journey really is the destination. And when I remind myself of that in those moments where I'm like, I just want it now, like, Something I want so bad right now is to be a mom. And it's been my journey and it's a fertility journey. It's a whole thing. It's been transformational. And it's like this journey has been so transformational and it is the destination. Like, yes, one day that will happen and I can't wait. And in the meantime, like giving myself exactly what I need in this moment to re remember that like I'm getting the learnings that I need along the way. You know, I, I really love that you said that because. You know, I, I, I think about this all the time. You know, when you go to like the store, like fucking TJ Maxx or something, right? They always have those signs and it's like, it's the journey, not the destination. It's so true when you actually understand what that means. Yes. Because whenever you accomplish this really big goal in your life, whenever you get the thing that you want, have you ever been satisfied? Mm. And then when you start to adapt the understanding that it's about the day in and the day out, it's about the shifts, it's about the movements, it's about the actions, it's about the being present where you are, then when you adapt that understanding that it is about the journey and not the destination, life becomes way different. So different. It's like Because I used to be like, if I can do that one thing, oh my God, holy shit, life will be amazing. And then you do that thing and you go, Wow, that was actually pretty underwhelming. <laughs> oh my, did you watch the Disney Soul movie? Yes. Do you, you know what I'm talking about? Where the guy, like, he's he only wants to be a jazz player and he finally plays with the famous person that he's always wanted to play with. And he's like, now what? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's it's such a great parable for life. You know, I think about it. Yes, I've I've won amazing speaking competitions. Yes, I've had like number one best-selling books, blah, blah, blah. It's kind of like I do that and I go, okay, cool, what's next? And yeah. when I think about like how am I serving people today right now in this moment, that carries far more weight than any of the trophies, any of the awards, any of the accolades, any of the other things. And so I think when you get really clear and, and be okay, look, because we live in a society that always wants to measure us against our accomplishments. I would argue that if I could remove my bio and just say, Michael, if I could just get um, people to like acknowledge me and get me on their shows and stuff like that'd be really cool. We know the world doesn't work that way. Right. And so when we hold ourselves to this idea that we have to reach these gigantic goals to create validation in our life. That's that feels for lack of a better way to phrase it, because I don't have a better word at the moment, toxic. Right. And because of that, what ends up happening, you're only always measuring yourself against the latest, greatest thing that you've done. And I'm just like, how'd you show up today? Yes. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So powerful. So powerful. I had a teacher once say to me, is the ordinary that gets the extraordinary. It's the ordinary moments that add up to being extraordinary. And I always say that our dreams don't come true in one fell swoop. I mean, sometimes when you win the lottery, but that's not really the dream. You know what I mean? Like that, let's not count that, but like our dreams come true in the smallest of moments, right? When we can show up the way that yeah. we truly want in a way that is kind to ourselves and to others. So powerful. <sighs> Okay, I have to ask you, what makes you a badass manifester? My journal. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, like the, I have written things down in my journal, in my notebooks. There are five on my desk right now. People, I'm, I'm a little OCD about it, but each one serves a purpose. And each one of the colors serves a purpose. And so when I take this thing, the pen, which is arguably mightier than the sword, depending on the context. And I write down my life. 
it is incredible to me, Ashley, how often it comes to fruition. It's unbelievable. At the beginning, go, I love Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone invested $10,000 into my company. Like that's a big accolade right? I've been on Entrepreneur on Fire podcast, something that's really big. I wrote that goal down seven years ago. I want to create context here. I wrote down seven years ago, I'll be on Entrepreneur on Fire one day, seven years ago. And then it happened, right? This, this idea, we, we put our attention to the things in front of us and people go, I wrote down my goals. I go, well, then when's the last time you looked at them? They go, well, I did it on Sunday. It's Friday. Okay, I write down my goals every single day, mm. every day, every day, every day, every day. You have to understand this. Attention goes where you put it. And yes. if you read those goals every single day and you look at them on a long enough timeline, and it might take 30 years, that can come to fruition. Because when you're writing it down every day, not looking at it every day, writing it down every day, there's an energy that is transferred into that where you're looking at it and now you put action towards it. People are like, I wrote down my goal. Why didn't I get it yet? It's been four years because you haven't done anything about it. You've sat here and waited for it to miracle itself into existence. When you write down your goal and you look at it and you assess it and you move towards it, just one degree, again, there's micro wins. All right, if I want to be on this big stage one day, how do I do it? Well, maybe I need to do this and then this and then this and then this and then this. Then on a long enough timeline, it comes to fruition. I've been writing in my journal for four years. I'm going to speak with Tony Robbins on stage. Not Tony Robbins is going to speak to me. I'm going to speak with him on stage and deliver a message. Been writing that for four years. In 36 years, it'll happen. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. I think that is so profound, so beautiful. Do you write the same goals every day? Like whatever your goals are, do you ever expand on them? Or are they different? How do you do it? I write them every day until they come to fruition. Wow. And see, and it starts with this again, clarity. Like this is why I really want to hit home with people. Clarity is everything. The first thing I write down every single day is I will end generational trauma in my lifetime. That is improbable. It's infeasible. It is impractical. It is irresponsible. It is impossible. But that ain't going to stop me. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Be unrealistic as possible when you write your goals. I think that's yeah. a good one. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and, and do they change? Do they differ? Only when I reach it. Right. And so like right now I'm writing six, seven a day. Right. And I go, OK, maybe something came up where I go, that actually doesn't make sense. I'm out of alignment with that. You have the permission to change your mind. And so when that happens, I just go, OK, cool. That's not where I need to go right now. Maybe I'll come back to it one day. And it's shocking to me how often I've written down stuff where I'm like, oh, I got to do that thing. And then a week goes by and I kind of go, I move zero action towards that thing. Clearly, I don't want to do it next. Right. Mm. So you have to get really clear. You have to understand who you are. I think that that level of clarity, like that's where you get. So powerful. And I just have to know, because you said you have five journals and they all serve a different purpose. Yeah. What are they? What are they? Like, can I, can I know what they are? Yeah. So I got a mindset journal. I got a business journal. I got a dreams journal. I got an angry journal. <laughs> and then I have a coaching journal. Awesome. So cool. Wow. It has been so incredible having you on the show. You're incredibly inspiring and amazing and so relatable. And I'm curious, I know everyone wants to know where they can find you, buy your book, all the things. So will you please share? Yeah, of course. You can have the book for free, actually, um, because, yeah, it's uh, so you can find me everywhere at Michael Unbroken on all the social medias. And if you go to thinkunbrokenpodcast.com and sign up for the newsletter, you can download the book for free. I made it as cheap as I can make it on Amazon. They won't let me make it free. So you have to pay for it if you want it like that, or you can go to thinkunbrokenpodcast.com. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much for being here. I really, truly appreciate your energy and your mission. My pleasure. Right, thank you, my friend. Yes. Thank you, my friend. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Go check out Michael. He's absolutely amazing. And we'll see you next week. Woo. 
We did some work today. Thank you so much for listening. You know I love my BAM fam. If this episode resonated with you, please share it with someone who you know would love it too because we live for the ripple effect over here. And how can you best support the show? Make sure you're subscribed, hit the five stars, and leave a review on iTunes and let me know how the podcast has impacted you. I love being part of your real-time journey, so screenshot the episode and tag me and my guests on Instagram at Manifest with Ash. Now say it with me. I am my own power source. I am the master of my own energy, and I deserve everything that I desire. We don't just talk about it over here. We be about it. Now go get them. <laughs>